Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello everyone and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today we're playing some uh, more Brokos Infect version with some upgrades. Looking at our opening hand, one land does not cut, so let's go ahead and take that free mulligan. Our new hand really isn't cutting it either. It looks like we're going to have to go down to six. Sad face. Next hand. Now we have nothing but lands. That's interesting, I suppose. Let's go ahead and keep this. At least we can play stuff. Get rid of rampant growth. Won't need that, looks like. Click done and go to the game. Oran Reef, the Vastwood, into play for our first opponent, who happens to be Skullbriar, the Walking Grave. Black Green for Legendary, Zombie Elemental, 1-1 one, one Haste. When it deals combat damage to a player, it gets 1-1 one, one counter on it, and counters remain on it as it moves to any other zone than the Hand and Library. Very good with the Ikoria counters. Our turn gives us Sprouting Vines, more ramp. So, that's goodish, I guess. Let's go ahead and play the Evolving Wilds. Looks like we're going to need double green so far. Let's go ahead, crack it, and get a forest. Basic forest into play tap, pass it off to our opponents. So our commander is Brokos Apex of Forever. Two black, green, blue for legendary 6-6 Nightmare Beast Elemental with Trample. You can cast it from your graveyard with its mutate ability, which is very nice. Cheats commander cost a bit. Its mutate ability is two Demir Green Green. So in this deck, we focus on mutating onto something with infect and smashing face with it. Blood Chief Ascension down for our second opponent. Swamp into play as well. A lower one Swamp, by the way, very colorful. And they are playing Garuda Doom of Deaths, Clone General Extraordinaire. For Demir Demir for a 6 6 Demon Kraken. Companion won't matter this time, it is a commander. When enters the battlefield, each player mills four cards. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under your control. I've used Brokos against Garuda before. It did not work out very well at all. Swamp into play for our last opponent, who is. Karlov of the Ghost Council. White, black for a 2 2. Whenever you gain life, it gets two 1 1 counters on it, and white and black remove six 1 1 counters from Karlov. Exile target creature. Ooh, that's gonna be bad. So we are facing down some pretty fierce opposition here. Uh, I don't know how we're going to go down with it. Did add a little bit more protection to the deck, too, so we'll have to just see how it goes. Forced into play for Skullbriar. No black source. That is a sadness. Going to roll over to us, I wager. Oop, nope. Second main phase. Nature's claim onto the Ascension. Nice. Very nice. I do love Nature's Claim. They're cheap. They're efficient. For life and EDH usually doesn't matter. Pick one up. Comes our turn. We get Ghost Quarter. All the lands are going to be ours. Let's go ahead and play the Watery Grave into play tapped. Nothing else to play this turn. Let's pass it off. Over to Jeruda. I actually use this to great effect in my Yortiller deck. It is ridiculous. Any clone with Garuda is stupid. Demir Signet coming down for the Garuda player. Over to Karlov. This is actually the first time I faced down a Karlov deck, so I expect it to be swift and merciless, based on things I've heard. There's Soul's Attendant. That's not going to be very good. Uh, we usually don't play that many creatures, although I have up the creature count, so we'll have to see how that goes. So far, we haven't drawn any, unfortunately. Over to the Zombie Elemental. And honestly, that's not a type line I expect to see ever again, but we'll see how that goes. Swamp into play for them. I imagine a Skullbriar. Yep, there it is. Uh, who are they going to hit? Are they going to hit us or Garuda? Souls of Tenet will trigger. Karlov player will gain a life. That's going to be the most deadly part of this. 1-1 one, one counter. Oran Reef, the Vastwood being activated to the Skullbriar. Okay, so hopefully they'll swing into Karlov. I know they need to get Skullbriar bigger, but I'm hoping they kill the Souls of Tenet or at least hit Karlov for some commander damage. Skullbride player to the attack, sending it into Karlov. Yes. Excellent. So let's see if they're going to block. I doubt it. This early in the game, Soul's Attendant is much more valuable. Commander damage is good against the Karlov player. Skullbride will trigger. It will get a 1-1 counter. Comes to our turn. We get a Swamp. Okay. Uh, don't need any more lands. Let's go.
Go ahead and play the Morphic Pool, keep up mana for Spraying Vines, and pass it off to our opponents. All more depths into play for Gruda. They get to look at the top three cards and put them back in any order. Not quite Scry, but still very useful. Mine Crank coming down for Garuda. Oh, they're working hard on some combos over there, it looks like. So let's take a look at Blood Chief Ascension. At the beginning of each end step, if an opponent lost two or more life this turn, you may put a quest counter on it. Whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, if Blood Chief Ascension has three more quest cards on it, you may have that player lose two life. If you do, you gain two life. And then we have Mind Crank. Whenever an opponent loses life, they mill that many cards. So yeah, that would have went infinite right there. That is just dang okay. I mean, they had to have the quest counters, but still. It threatened infinite on like turn three, you know? Call off of the Ghost Council coming down for that player after a swamp drop. So the tenant will trigger. Karlov is going to get bigger two counters for Karlov. Let's go ahead and play our Sprouting Vines now. No reason not to. We get a Storm trigger, so we'll get another copy of Sprouting, uh, Sprouting Vines, rather, and we'll get two lands from our deck to our hand. Let's go ahead and get a Forest and an Island, and that'll be it. That's it for Karlov. Over to the Skullbriar. So we have two very aggressive two-drop generals, a combo-tastic six-drop general, and then us just playing some weak butt infect over here. That's really what it feels like right now, especially since we have no infect. Uh, and we also really have a lot of trouble protecting Brokos from Karlov, so that's also something I'm not looking forward to. Daring Fiend Bonder, Taxi's turns able has haste. One black exile this from a graveyard, put an indestructible counter on target creature. Nice. You can only use it anytime you can cast a sorcery, but that is pretty good. Haste and 5 1. Soul's Attendant will trigger again. Karlov will most likely be on the six counters needed to remove something by the time it comes back to their turn. Skullbriar on the attack, off into the Garuda player. That's fine with me. Uh, we really aren't posting much of a threat on the board, so I'm happy with that. Daring Fiendbonder off into Karlov. Yep, kind of figured that was going to happen. They want it dead so they can get that indestructible counter. Ooh, damage is good everywhere. Mine Crank will trigger. So Karlov is going to lose five cards off the top of their deck to their graveyard. Let's see what those are. Skullbriar triggers, getting another counter. They lose, ooh, lots of stuff. Sorcerer Priest is <laughs> really good. Righteousness, whenever a creature attacks, you gain one life. Rock's Faith Mender, you gain twice that much life. And Bolus' is Citadel. Ooh, that would have been good. Yeah, that can all stay in the graveyard. I'm happy with that. Comes our turn, we get Phyrexian Reclamation. Again, not very helpful right now. Let's go ahead and play Fabled Passage. Crack it. Uh, at this point, maybe we should have played a landfall deck. I'm not entirely sure. What do we want to get? Uh, probably another swamp. So let's go ahead and do that. Comes into play untapped. Uh, let's just go ahead and play the Frixion Reclamation. Why not? Unfortunately, that might eat some removal, but at this point, just having something happen might be good. If we can set up kind of while, like when they fight amongst themselves, that's kind of what I'm going to be aiming for right now. But we're going to need to draw something other than a land. Over to Garuda, Temple of the Seat into play. They'll get to scry one. Let's see if they can randomly combo off. That's it for Garuda, over to Karlov. So they don't have enough counters on it just yet, although all they have to do is play a creature spell or something, but then they don't have removal for Skullbriar. Skullbriar might be a problem for him. Nyxthos, Shrine to Nyx into play for the Karlov player. Budget Cabal Coffers is basically what it turns into, or I guess a budget cradle, if you're into that. Eight and a half tails. Did not see that coming. So we'll cover this. This is from Kamagawa. I forget which block or which set in the box specifically. Souls Attendant triggers. They're going to have the counters now. They do have to pay for it, but <laughs> I mean, it's still a huge commander. So eight and a half tails. White, white for legendary Fox Cleric 2 2. One in white. Target permanent you control gains protection from white until end of turn. And one target spell or permanent becomes white until end of turn. I've seen decks build around that in EDH. They tend to be kind of tricky and stuff and draw in the commander a lot. But you have to admit, this is a very unique white commander. Very unique legendary white creature. Plus the art's pretty crazy. Call of not swinging anywhere. That's interesting. Thought they might take the risk. Over to Skullbriar. Six cards in hand for them, by the way. No one really doing too bad, except for maybe us, just because we know our hand is full of land cards. Ordeal of Nile onto Skullbriar. When it attacks, put one counter on it. If it has three or more, sacrifice it. You guys search your library for two basic land cards. Price of Fame. This costs two less to cast if it targets a legendary creature. It is targeting Karlov of the Ghost Council. Destroy the creature. They can't protect it. They would have to have two and white to do so. Karlov is down. Price of Fame I'm beginning to see a lot. Just like Lightning Bolt. 
uh, a braid is probably a good inclusion these days as well. So keep an eye out on those. Fries of Fame itself as instant is really good. A braid also handles artifacts and can kill a lot of utility creatures. EDH is getting very point and shoot kind of removal. Skullbride to the attack. Uh, I imagine they'll swing into us just to keep things even, but we'll see how it goes. Daring f uh, Fiendbonder probably back into Karlov. We'll have to see. Skullbrand to us, yep. And Daring Fiendbonder, it won't tell me right now. Order of Nihil will trigger. It'll get a one counter on it, and then they'll get a basic land. Two basic lands, sorry. All right, Daring Fiendbonder is off into Karlov. I'm going to just take the five commander damage here. We could bounce it back to the hand and reset the counters with Simic Charm. But I want, I want Skullbri around to pressure Karlov and Garuda, so I'm willing to take the five now for them to take more later. Eight and a half tails assigned to block the fiend or the fiend bonder. I always want to say fiend hunter. I'm totally the wrong guard, but it is assigned to block. They will trade with each other. Mind crank will trigger. Skullbriar hits us. We take five commander damage down to thirty-five. Skullbrinder will be a six-six. Daring fiend bonder in the graveyard. They can now exile it to put that indestructible counter on the Skullbriar. Comes our turn. We get Eternal Witness after being milled. So we got Siege Behemoth. Very nice. Mirvok Skydiver. Harvester of Souls. Balaged Recovery, which is <laughs> a little bit unfortunate. And Terramorphic Expanse. That's not terrible. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Ghost Quarter. Threaten to destroy the Nyxos if we need to. And then I think we'll just pass it. I don't want to play the Eternal Witness just yet. Maybe we can get milled for a little bit more and get an Infect Creature out of our graveyard. The guys we have in there are like a turn away from being able to be paid for. Plus, we do have Phyrexian Reclamation. I don't want to put all of our Recursion out on the board. Over to Garuda. They're tapping a bunch of mana. Garuda coming down, I wager. Yep, there it is. Garuda, Doom of Depths. The Doom Force it actually might be. All they need is... Uh, Jace's, or was it Spark Double? That would be really bad. Souls Attendant triggers again. Karloff player gaining one life. All right. Everybody will mill four, and then they get to recur anything. We do have Harvester of Souls in our graveyard. Let's see what else we get. Reaper of Shieldred. Okay. Positive playing. Needed that. Hand of the Creators. Nice. Whispering Spectre is really good. It has flying. Garuda gets something back from their own graveyard. Wall of Stolen Identity was a clone, so it came in as Garuda. They sacrificed it because it's legendary. Garuda will trigger again. As long as they keep hitting clones, this could go a while, and we will get milled for a lot. I'm very glad we have the Eternal Witness and the Phyrexian Reclamation down. This time is nothing but lands. Nice. Let's see what they have in here. Deadeye Navigator is pretty good. Uh, let's see what's over in Karloff. Sun Titan pretty good. Probably not something they want, though. And really not much out of Skullbriar, so I'm thinking we're going to get Deadeye. Uh, they could get the Wall of Stolen Identity at some point back with some recursion. They do choose Sun Titan. Okay. I wonder what they will recur. Could be Felwar Stone. They're recurring the Blood Chief Ascension. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, that is not my favorite play ever. Okay, so they have more or less combo on the battlefield. Opponents just have to lose some life. Oh boy. Okay, so what do we do? Karlov's turn. High market into play. Time Nut the Weaver coming down. So as long as they get to hit somebody, they get some card draw. They'll probably be hitting us. We are completely open and defenseless. Souls Attendant, you know what it does. Do the attacks. Hopefully they won't hit us. All right. No hits. It looks like maybe we'll agree on uh, which player is definitely the threat. So going back to what I said, yeah, Sun Titan was apparently a very good card for them. Totally forgot, and I guess I really want to, about the Blood Chief Ascension. Oh, we're in a spot now. Over to Skullbriar's turn. Let's see if they can do anything about it. Lots of mana being tapped over Skullbriar. Hunter's Prowess. Until the turn, target creature is 3-3 trample, and whenever it deals combat damage to the player, draw that many cards. That'll be good. Let's see if they bother to send it at Garuda. Uh, I don't feel like taking 9 Commander. I don't want to bounce it either. I want to kind of save that for Sun Titan or something. Skullbriar on the attack. Off into us. Oh boy. Do I want to do something about it? Simic Charm, I bounce it back to the hand. Skullbriar is gone. We don't take nine. We don't lose nine life. We don't start milling ourselves to death. Seems good. Skullbriar coming back down for that player. It'll lose all the counters it had, though. Souls Attendant, there it goes. We will pay for a Phyrexian Reclamation activation. 
let's go ahead and get the Whispering Spectre back to our hand. We do lose two life. We are helping Blood Chief go off, but I'm hoping we can at least start threatening things. Comes our turn, we get an island. Deck hates me, I'm telling you. Let's go ahead, play a forest. And we'll play Eternal Witness. I think they neglected to put a counter on the Blood Chief Ascension. That's interesting. All right, what do we want to get back with the Witness? Uh, problem being, we need something small, perhaps, as backup. We'll get back Hand of the Creators, I suppose. There we are, and then let's go ahead and play our Whispering Spectre. Mostly for blocks, because, yeah, bad things are going to happen. Soul's Attendant triggers again, and we'll pass it off. Garuda's turn, they are straight to combat. I imagine Sun Titan will be going somewhere. I don't see anything they could get back besides lands, if it lets me look. Jeez. Felwar Stone, I suppose. Sun Titan, they're choosing to get back an island. That's never a good thing. All right, so Sun Titan is attacking into Skullbrier. They're probably just going to take it. They're at a healthy 40 life. Damage is good. Mind Crank will trigger it. They will mill six cards. Uh, let's see if they put a counter on Blood Chief Ascension. Does not look like they do. Still no marking on it, so that's good. Second main for Garuda. Displace, exile up to two target creatures you control, then return them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Garuda getting the blink. So this is, in case you don't have Ghostly Flicker, this card is perfectly serviceable. They're going to mill some more stuff. Let's see what we get in here. Uh, another bunch of lands. Grafted Exoskeleton could have been good, I suppose. Garuda, let's see what they got. Ghostly Flicker, Tefri's Time Twister, Displace. Or no, two swamps, okay. Tragic Arrogance, Sangromancer will... Uh, let's see, Snake, Umbra, Slippery, Bog Wander. This, if they get, if they can steal a white source somehow, will kill a table. Easily the best guild mage out of all three sets, in my opinion. You can let me know in the comments if you disagree, but this is the best. All right, so they get Slippery, Bog Bonder. Their guy will get Hexproof. That sucks. Blood Chief Ascension, they'll put a counter on it this time. Sad face. Karloff, straight through the turn, all the way to the end step. Over to Skullbriar. Hopefully Karlov is keeping up removal. Deadly Tempest destroy all creatures. Okay. So I guess I just I hope they don't have too many more of these things in the deck. Basically. Because if they cast another one, it'll trigger ascension. It gets countered. Stubborn denial out of the Garuda player, but still. That is dangerous, to say the least. Because if they cast another one of these things and anybody loses life, they're out of the game basically, as long as Mind Crank keeps cranking. All right, we have a high market activation. By sacrificing the soul's attendant, the Carla player will gain one life. Board wipe is countered. Skullbriar quits the game. Yeah, Skullbriar tends to be a very eggs and basket kind of commander. Comes our turn, we get Woodland Cemetery. All right, well, not much to be done. Let's go ahead and play it. And I suppose then we'll risk playing our commander, although Garuda probably has a counter spell in hand. Let's go ahead and uh, see if they do. We will mutate on top of the Spectre. That way, it's a Trample 6-6 Flying Infector. Underneath the logo, it says over or under. Let's go ahead and go to combat. We'll attack the Garuda player. Flying Trample Mutate, go. Damage is good. We may sacrifice it to have them discard cards in their hand. I think I'm going to do that. We will not return our commanders to the command zone, since we can mutate from the graveyard. They had to discard all the cards in their hand, because they have six or more Infect counters. They only had three. Demont Consultation, another combo piece. They probably have Thassa's Oracle in here too, jeez. Delay, counter target spell, which they didn't use against us, which I thought was interesting, and Vils Broker of Blood. All right, over to Garuda. We really don't have anything to defend ourselves with. Uh, we could start the cycle with Friction Reclamation and uh, mill ourselves to death. Release to the Wind, here's another one. Exile target non online permit for as long as that card remains exiled, its army may cast it without paying its mana cost. So essentially they get to blink it again. So Garuda going in for more value. Garuda coming back down for that player. Let's see what everything, well, what hits the fan, really. We get Skitherx the Blight Dragon, Viral Drake, Starlet Mantle. So most of our protection is down. They get Jin Gintaxis Core Augur. At the beginning of your end step, draw seven cards. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. Ouch. Sun Titan on the attack into us. All right, let's see what they get back with it. They're going to get back, animate, Nope, Dance of the Dead. That's not good. Comes into play. What are they going to target with it? They target the Wall of Stolen Identity. I could not see, I checked the graveyards a bunch and could not see a little arrow that said, I'm targeting here. It's gonna become a copy of Garuda. Yep, so we're gonna have a bunch of triggers again. 
We have Daxus, Blessed by the Sun. So, when another creature enters the battlefield or dies, they gain a life. We get milled for Triumph of the Hordes, Vorath. Oh, I wanted to try that out. Somebody suggested Vorath to me, and I thought, why not? It might be an interesting other commander, too. Uh, Echoing Truth, Mole Drifter. Yeah, all right. So, let's go to blocks. We'll block the Sun Titan with the Eternal Witness. Damage is good to the Eternal Witness. She is down. Jinga Texas, they will draw seven cards. Oof. Over to Carlos' turn. That's it for Garuda. No infinite combos yet. They do have seven cards in hand, though. And we have Hand of the Praetors. Not the best. And Karlov quits the game. Okay. Uh, I guess we can just risk the Phyrexian Reclamation. I mean, I kind of need a creature back. Wish you had haste, but that's probably not what's going to happen right now. Lots of sadness. Let's go ahead and get Whispering Spectre back. We will lose two life. Mind Crank will trigger. Blood Chief Ascension should trigger at the end of this player's turn. Although technically it's not the end of the turn because they're gone. I also kind of want to see how that pans out, which is one of the reasons I did it. Other than that, we get hit for something and it's over. Plus Jin getting attacks us or whatever. It's just going to wreck our hand if we don't play something. So we get Whispering Spectre back. Let's see if all the triggers still happen. I imagine they will. Magic on, yep. Magic Online is good like that. All right, so we have one chance to do anything, and I really just don't think it's going to happen. So let's go ahead and try to get as much infect on them as possible and do some blocking and stuff. Uh, it looks like we're going to need more black, so let's get down a swamp. Let's get down Hand of the Creators. At least then we can fling some infect at them. There isn't going to be much we can do, though. Unfortunately, we are still one mana short of being awesome. A sad face it is. Let's get down the Whispering Spectre. Flenser might? Huh, I've been reading that wrong the whole time. I wish we got gotten that down to give an extra infect counter, but what can you do? All right, let's just pass it off to our opponent. Uh, see what they have in store for us. Have to discard all the cards in our hand, unfortunately. If we can somehow pull a win out on this, I would be thrilled, but it is looking severely one-sided. <laughs> Phantasmal image, yet another clone. That'll be another guru to trigger. There it is. So let's see what they mill this time. Oh, still a lot of lands for us. Jeez. They do have Plague Stinger. Arcane Denial doesn't count. Over on their side, Thassa's Oracle is, in fact, yep, in the deck. That is just rude. When Thassa's Oracle comes into play, look at the top X card of your library or X is Devotion to Blue, which is currently six for them. Put one of them on the top of your library and the rest on the bomb and of your library in random order. If X is greater or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So in this deck, even without the Demont Consultation, it's a good card, but rude. Hedron Archive coming down. I saw they spoiled Sisei's ring for Commander Legends. Why not put in the Hedron Archive, though? Firemind Vessel also coming down. Airs the battlefield tapped. Adds two mana of different colors. All right, we have attacks. All right, so Garuda attacking with both. If we block both, we survive, but have nothing to put Brokos on and no infect. If we don't block, the combo might, well, will go off, and then we end up dying because we can't draw. And that's basically what we have to choose here. At this point, I think we'll just take it. Even if I have to recur something with Friction Reclamation, combo starts going off. If for some reason we survive, we can win. Mind Crank will trigger. We will, we mill a bunch more cards. 11 to be exact. All right, and there's the trigger. Cleanup step. I don't know why we haven't infinitely lost life. Uh, we got Psychonic Rift. That's flipping amazing. I honestly don't know why this didn't trigger. Whenever cards put in a graveyard from anywhere, three or more quest cards on it. Oh, because it didn't have three. Nice. All right, well, let's get to work then. Gonna recast Brokos from our graveyard. We will cast with Mutate on our Whispering Spectre. Click all the mana. And we will go to attacks. Attack our opponent. Seven infect. And somehow we win the match. Uh, this had me worried to high hell because I thought it was two counters and not three. I don't even know how we won that really. But, okay, let's go take a look at the deck and the upgrades we made to Brokos Infect version. Okay, here's the deck. Uh, it used to have 18 creatures, now we have 26. Lands up to 38 from 37, I believe. I added more protection and a bit more evasion and some more Infect. So for more Infect, we have Grafted Exoskeleton over here. Pretty good card all around. Spinebiter, only because it can assign damage as though it wasn't blocked. So we don't even need to mutate Brokos onto it. We can just kind of swing if we need to. 
That's the same we got going with the Siege Behemoth. As long as it's attacking for each creature we control, we can sign as though they weren't blocked. And that's what that's there for. Plus, it's really hard to kill. It's a 7-4. Not too shabby. Beanstalk Giant. There because of the big creature and its land search. Why not? Harvester of Souls. Because our commander has Trample with Death Touch. Creature dies. We draw cards. Kind of a synergy there. More card draw. Added a bunch of that, too. Uh, again, Vorath, the Shape Stealer, was suggested to me. I think they're almost interchangeable in the deck with some tweaks, so I might even play this with Vorath at the front and see how that goes. Other than that, I add Reaper of Shieldred. I added the Hand of the Creators. I added Viridian Corruptor because it is removal. I don't think it was in the last build. Not sure, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't just because it didn't do anything else. Uh, as for protection, like I said, add Starlet Mantle. Simic Charm still in the deck. We still have Lazotep Plating. We also still have Void Grafter. Uh, I do need, I forgot to add Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves. Lightning Greaves specifically isn't that good in the deck because Mutate does target. If we look at our commander, it says target non-human creature in the Mutate Reminder text, so be very careful with Shroud in the deck and Protections, which is something we have with Sword of Truth and Justice because that's pro blue. We also have some things that take Trample into consideration like the Death Touch from Harvester of Souls. Auron Frostfang is in the deck for some extra card draws. Well, I really like this card. Uh, Trample of the Hordes I add to the deck that is a more expensive card. It has been reprinted. I don't know how far it's gone down, and people usually groan when you play it. But if we can't depend on our Infect creatures, we need to give our guys Infect or Trample or something like that. Also add some Mass Removal. Took out Engaric's Wake, which was in the original design, and added Forts of Despair. We have a lot of problems with token decks, and apparently Garuda it will work great against. This board wipe is very, very specific, but if you have it and something to discard of the mana up, and you're playing against tokens, this can really save your butt. As for Proliferate, I think all I added was really Thrumming Bird uh, and Tezzeret's Gambit, I think was in the last one. But yeah, Thrumming Bird and Stay Progress are still in the deck. Uh, not really much else. I do still have the Evolution Sage, which is the Landfall Proliferate. So four or five areas of Proliferate, not too much there. And uh, yeah, there's the deck. A little bit more ramp, a little bit more card draw, more Infect, like one more stuff of Proliferate and some well, evasion, the fact that you can't block me or they have death touch and my commander will have trample. So I'll post this deck list below because it is an updated version. I know I didn't do that with Winona. I didn't feel like it really needed an updated version because the first version was superior. Uh, but I will post this one. Remember to add swift foot boots that I kind of overlooked that a little bit. And let me know what you think. If you saw any cards you want to order for yourself in this video, sealed product that's coming out, or sleeves to protect that sealed product, please consider using the TCG Player affiliate link below in the description. You'll help out the channel, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Plus, it'll help me get to the sweet, sweet Commander Legends Commanders, because dang, there are a lot of those guys. And hopefully I can get to cover some cool ones on the channel. I mean, there's just so many cool ones, I don't even know where I'm going to begin. I'm just going to hope I have like a batch lot of commanders I want to play. And if I get three or four of those, I'll be happy at this point. Anyway, I'll see you uh, on the next series for the channel as we wait for Commander Legends to come out on Magic Online and in real life. Until then, stay safe out there.